15, in chapter 15, um, there's three stories. The first two stories are about something that's lost. A person is willing to search until they find it. And Jesus says, what's the application of this lesson? He is searching for sinners to save. If one salvation, heaven is at one at every salvation, heaven is full of just one person gets saved, they're celebrating in heaven. So here's a story that's a little bit different. It's about two sons, the oldest and the youngest, and the father. So remember, children. The children are his. Uh, his children are never, one, once you're God's child, you're his forever. You're never lost. All who join his family are his children forever. Um, am I reading now? Yes. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose, and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet 
thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as his son was come, but as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Let's pray. Help us to understand this point. I pray you'd work in our hearts. You are the perfect father, the best father, and this story is such a good example of that. These two sons. Many times we are like unto them. Many times we are guilty of these same things. Please help us to learn, to repent, please. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. So first of all, please notice, so yeah. This is a normal uh, in culture that a father would save and give to his children. So usually, you know, happens after death, right? Or maybe near the end of life. Um, um, he's, you know, gives money to his kids or whatever his inheritance. Um, or maybe uh, gives over the business or whatever. Um, and, um, when he dies or before he dies. But here in this story, it's, it's amazing. You know, his father has worked and saved and prepared for his kids, but the youngest one says, you know what, I want my stuff now. Give it to me now. And for us Christians, right now, our life is full of blessings every day. Every day, he giveth plenty of blessings. One example is salvation. Every day, you know, we have that every day. And he gives us more. That's his plan. His plan is to bless us even more than that, you know, with heaven. But right here, right now, here on earth, we have a life full of blessings. Sometimes we think, you know, right now, you know, all these things, it's just not enough. I want more. I want it now. But my question, Are, are you satisfied with your relationship with, with, with Christ or are, are you feeling distant? Or you feel like, you know what? That's not enough. I want this other stuff. I want something. I want something else. I want that. I want that. I want that. Maybe a new car. Maybe that'll help. That's what I want. Uh, house. I want a bigger house. I want it now. Would you rather have Jesus more than any of these things? Or are you thinking, you know what? Um, it's just not enough. You know, uh, I just, I, I can't be getting these things right now. It keeps getting put off and now I'm fed up and I'm not satisfied. In Hebrews chapter, uh, that we need to be content with him. It doesn't matter, you know, if we have a lot of stuff or a little stuff. Our contentment needs to be found in Christ. And secondly, are we willing to wait for him? I mean, his plan is to bless us. We have a wonderful home in heaven. 
maybe there will be a new car someday, but it's not happening now. Are you willing to wait on him? Or are you, are you like, you know what? Nope, too slow. I want it now. And you just start getting more and more in debt. Many blessings for every Christian. Life. Uh, eternal life. A relationship with him. Love. Hope. Peace. Joy. Some of you, um, you know, you have a family. Some of you have a wife or a husband or children. You have a church. You have a wonderful church. Some of you work. You have, you have a skill with which to work and support your family. You feel your life has a purpose. You're able to support and care for your family. You're able to serve the Lord, be involved in soul winning, helping people get saved, teaching others. These are wonderful blessings. In heaven, it's going to be better, but we have so many things even now here. So my question, are you satisfied and grateful? Secondly, we want to notice this younger son, these two sons. Notice the younger one. It says, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. So the younger son, he was not patient. He was not willing to wait. He wanted what he wanted, and he wanted it now. So please notice the father. I mean, it, it hurt his heart. It's like, you know, your relationship with me, son's not enough. This house, this family, the love, the joy that we have here, the blessings, the peace, all of these things, and you're not satisfied, it's not enough. And it, it hurt his father's heart. But he said, all right. Um, I'll, I'll do what you ask. I'll give it to you. Didn't argue, didn't debate it. Said, okay, fine. And he gave it up. And that was bad and that was wrong because he was not patient. He just took everything. He packed his stuff and he left. And he traveled far away to another country. And he just wasted it all on, you know, frivolous living with, Harlots and parties and fornication and all of this stuff. It's awful. And the end result was suffering. When the money ran out, there's no food. And in that area, there, there it became a drought. The land was dry, there was a famine, and he was hungry. That was the result. Sin is hard. Sin is cruel. It's, a hard, it's, it's hard when you're serving sin. So anyway... And then one day, the son just kind of came to himself, began thinking, thinking about his father. And he's like, wow, in my father's house, there's servants who have plenty to eat. He's like, man. And he began thinking, and he's like, you know, I was so wrong. I was so wrong. I was foolish. My father loves me. He's not rejected me. 
So I'm going to go to my father, and I'm going to confess my sin, and I'm going to tell him that I'm so sorry for all these things that I've done, that I'm not even worthy to be called his son anymore. Please hire me like a servant in your house. And that was his plan, and that's what he did. So my question is it easy for us to look on that younger son and be critical of his decisions, how he just wasted everything uh, involved in sin and it's easy to be critical, right? But, but wait a second. Sometimes you and I are the same way. God's given you life, beating heart, the ability to breathe and communicate. You use these things for yourselves. Or do you use it for him? What are you doing? That boy, that young son, he is selfish. Yeah, that's a true story. Ignorant. Yep, true story. But sometimes you and I are just like that. Money? You say, it's my money. This time that I have, it's my time. This body that I have, it's my body. My decision I'm my own boss. Sometimes we're just like that. We're all guilty of it. We're just like that younger son. So be careful of looking down on him and being harsh and critical. Take a moment and realize that sometimes we're just the same. Don't be hypocritical about it. Understand it, that we're just the same. And confess that to the Lord. Say, Lord, you know, sometimes I know I'm just like that younger son. Please forgive me. Please help me. Please help him. That we might both improve. And not look down on him. Because we are the same. We are sinners. So notice the father's mercy. This father here and the heavenly father as well. This story shows this comparison. So the son is there. You know, he's been in the far country. He's starving and he finally realizes, man, I've been an idiot. I just, I've been so wicked I'm going to go back home, and I'm going to confess my sin. I'm going to tell my father how wrong I was, that I've been so bad. So imagine a son who knows his father's merciful love and forgiveness. But he's, what? Imagine. Maybe the son has been struggled with the thought of his brother looking down on him, judging him, the shame he would feel. The Bible doesn't talk about that specifically, but, you know, there is that other brother. He is there. Anyway, the younger son, he decides to go back home. And here in this story, it says his father was looking for him. And then he sees him afar off. (laughs) Getting the binoculars maybe to get a clearer view, right? You know? And he's like, holy cow. And he ran to him. You know, this is an old man. And he ran. And he hugged him and he kissed him. And his son's trying to explain, Dad, I've been so wrong. It's, just, it's me. It's, I'm wrong. And the father's like, and, and the son's like, 
I'm not even worthy to be called your son anymore. Please, just hire me like one of your servants, please. And the father said, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a second. And he called his servants. Bring him a robe. Bring him a ring. And shoes. Give him some shoes. Oh, and, and yeah, you know, the, the fatted calf, the one that we prepared, kill it. Cook it. Because we're going to celebrate tonight. This God's love for us is so great. As, just as this father's love for his son, God's love is merciful. He didn't get in his face and he didn't say, you know what? What, what, are you, what were you thinking coming here? You wasted all that money I worked so hard for. What are you, crazy? What you doing? Been hanging out with these pigs and all these lousy friends. You know what? You haven't even been helping your brother. He didn't say any of that stuff. He just loved him. He accepted him. He blessed him. He forgave him. You know, that's our father. Sometimes we sin and we stray. And, and what, what do we need to do? We need to confess it. And he, he will love us and his mercy is so great. He's our father. He loves us. He, he, has, he has a plan to bless us. Now, and be merciful. We have a wonderful Heavenly Father. I want you to notice something else. Notice the older son, his sin. Remember, the oldest son. He heard something, and he came to see what was all about. And he's like, what? What's going on here? And he called the servant. He said, is this really happening? Is this really true? This is for my younger brother. What, what's this all about? And he was mad. He's fed up. He says, Dad, what are you doing? What? You see me, right? I've been here, I've been faithful, I've been working, I've been obeying all the time. And you're doing this for him. He took your money, he went and wasted it with harlots. And he comes back home and you're celebrating. What is up with that? What was his problem? Well, he was pious. He's like, Look at how good and perfect I am. And Father, don't you notice how perfect I am all the time, faithful all the time? Don't you notice me? And yet you've never given me this stuff. You've never killed the fatted calf for me or my friends. You never did anything like that. He was better. He was complaining. Sins like that. Not being satisfied with the Father. Not being satisfied with your family. You have no hope, no joy, no peace. Doesn't matter that you've got plenty of food. Doesn't matter that you've got a nice life. Doesn't matter that you're able to work. You're just not satisfied. You're just tired. It's just not enough. Why can't I go celebrate with my friends? You know? So question, are we sometimes pious like that older son? We think we're so much better. We look down on other people, say, look at that fool. Look at that idiot. That means you got a hard heart. You're looking around and criticizing everybody else. It means you're prideful. You think, I'm so much better. Can't you all see my halo? Pride, it's an awful thing. And God hates pride. The first son was full of it, full of pride. I am so much better than him. I am so much more worthy than him. 
It's wrong that you don't give me these things that you gave to him. You did it for him and not for me. It's wrong. It's pride. Self-righteousness. I'm right. I'm perfect. It's a terrible thing. Admonition. So in the Bible, we see this word. Hmm. Said fathers. Do not provoke your children to wrath. It means don't encourage them to be angry. Don't bring them into angry. Maybe uh, the father's neglected the son. Maybe picked at the son. Maybe the father's just been a hypocrite or a two-face with his son. The son and daughters look at that and they, they get angry inside. They're seething with anger because... You know, they look at their father and say, you know what, he lied. He's, he's two-faced. He's, it's terrible. And the children get angry, maybe even because they're, they're too, too afraid to even say anything. But inside their heart, they harbor anger, wrath against their dad. And God warns fathers not to do that. And he, he tells them, he says, Ra- raise them up and in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This word, admonition, it's like, it's like teaching, warning, with love, you know, tender. Not harsh and exacting, not, you know, weak and, but with with lesson, with truth, with warning, with, with teaching, training them, loving them. So notice this father in this story. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost but is found. So please notice the father trying to comfort the older son. Although he was wrong, he was wrong, but the father's like, hey, son, you're always with me. Everything that I have, it's, it's already yours. But your brother, he was dead. He was gone. He was lost. But now here he is. He's right here. He's learned something. He's repented. And we should be happy. We should celebrate that. And the father's gently warning and teaching and training his older son. It was not right for his older son to be angry. It was not right for his older son to complain. Our relationship, son, should be enough. Remember, all that I have is yours. He, it was a soft admonition. It was a tr- moment of training and learning. That's what this is. And that's how God is with us. He is soft and he is merciful. If we humble ourselves, it's easier to learn. And his his lessons are more merciful. He is willing to be more strict with us. He is willing. But he prefers that we humble ourselves that we soften our heart and receive his lessons. 
So my question, are you like the older son? You think, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm right. They're wrong. You know, that's pride. Pride shows up, you know. When pride shows up, we get angry. Why do we get angry? Because of pride. We pick at other people. Why? Because of pride. We complain. Why? Because of pride. Maybe, you know, it's something that we hide and we try to push down deep inside. We try to pretend like everything's cool, but inside we're really angry. It's a pride issue. Pride is strong. So be careful. Did this one sin? Yes. Did the other one sin? Yes. But the father was merciful to both, was loving to both, was teaching to both, and forgiving to both, and encouraging both. This is admonition. And this is our Heavenly Father. We need to copy his example. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day this Father's Day. Please help us to learn and become more like you, full of love, a blessing to others, merciful to others, forgiving to one another, willing to teach and train and warn with love. Please help us to improve in this, in this way Please work in our families with our children, please. Maybe there's a person here who is not yet saved. I pray you'd work in their heart. As it's all quiet now, think about yourself, your situation. Are you yourself a father? Your father, your father, yeah. So think about these things. We need to improve, right? We need to do better. Y'all saved? Already accepted Christ? That means that we are his child. We are a child of God. And sometimes we're like this younger boy. And sometimes we're like the older one. And whichever way it is, we need to humble ourselves. We need to have more wisdom. This younger one didn't have any wisdom. I mean, he wasted everything. We need to have more wisdom and offer all we have to God. And this older one who thought he was so righteous needs to humble himself. And sometimes we're just like him. We need to realize that we're not perfect and that we all need to improve. We all need to do better. We all need to become more like Christ. If you're not yet saved and you're watching, please understand we're, we all sin, every single person. And he is the judge. And there is only one punishment for sin. There's only one. And that's death in hell forever. There's no escaping it. But he, he loves us so much, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, to suffer, bleed, and die for all sin, for all people. And that happened one time for all. Why? Because of his love. He is, that there is only one way through salvation, only one way to remove your sin, to confess it. And confess that Jesus Christ is the true God. He's not some low God, not just some prophet, not just some great teacher. He is truly God, and he died on the cross for you and I. You need to trust in him 100%, 100% for your salvation. Don't trust in him for, in him and, and baptism and going to church and all these other things. No. Trust in Jesus and Jesus alone for forgiveness for your sin, and he will. He will. He will give you eternal life. You can do it today. 
Heavenly Father, please help us, Christians. We are your children. Help us not to copy these sons, either one of them, but help us, Lord, to humble ourselves. Pray that you would help us, uh, give us wisdom. Help us readily confess our sin and follow you. and Be satisfied with the relationship that we have with you. For those who are not yet saved, Lord, I pray you'd work in their hearts today, please. For us fathers, I pray that you would help us to copy your example. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.